Well, hey there, welcome back. My name is JR and this is Trade Skillers Anonymous and I appreciate your visit today and your view. So uh, previously I had installed a 1.5 kilowatt spindle on my Onefinity CNC, but then I had a failure in the original connection at the top of the spindle uh, the strain relief portion, a screw vibrated loose. I don't know if I didn't have it tight enough at the time, but that screw has uh, since been consumed by the fairies that run around in my shop and steal small parts, so it's no longer um, findable. So uh, I have upgraded that connector to a new style, had to make some modifications to the top assembly of my spindle. Um, but what precipitated this is that my Makita, which has given me great service for the last, I uh, guess, about nine or 10 months or so since I took the spindle off when I had the wiring issue, um, the brushes have now worn down to the point that it's given me issues. So this will become the backup and I will be installing that spindle today and remaking the, the cable that goes from my spindle to the VFD. So thanks for joining and I appreciate your time. Okay, so the first thing that has my attention is the standard socket that's part of the spindle. Um, I, I just don't know how far it protrudes into the housing here. So this could end up being a very short video and, um, uh, but we'll see. So I've got to disassemble the top plate, uh, pull that out because underneath here is the fan that provides the air cooling, uh, for this unit. So this other, um, replacement before I'm dropping it all over there has a fairly decent, that's about a half of an inch. Um, that's about a half an inch protrusion down into the body uh, of the spindle. So I'm first need to make sure that there's going to be room in the spindle housing to accept that. So we're about to see. So for those of you that grew up out west, what I'll tell you, um, if you ever ate at In-N-Out Burger, you're used to these trays here. The cool thing is they make excellent um, parts trays for stuff just like this. So uh, those are available online. I didn't walk out with them, um, but boy, they're they're a super handy, super handy parts tray. Um, yeah, it looks like I might have room, but gosh, I I hate to say I'm. This is going to be tight. So we're going to see. So the next step is I. Um, I'm going to need to unsolder their piece of shit connector uh, from this thing and uh, then just see if it'll fit, the new part will physically fit in there. All right, so the uh, holes on this new plug didn't exactly line up with the preformed holes that I found at the top of this, but I'm not going to be super worried about any of that until I can determine that this new plug assembly is going to not interfere with the fan of the spindle. And let me tell you, I've got it fully inserted there and I don't hear or feel any contact. So I'm going to assume that we're okay. So I'm going to continue by uh, putting on these nuts here and uh, see how we do. All right, so unless it really messes me up with trying to get these uh, wires soldered in, I'm, I've tried to bring you in close here and what you can see is there are some cups um, that form the actual connection here. So we just need to run a little bit of solder in there first wet that, wet the wires, then we should be able to bring them together with um, the least amount of heat uh, possible. So at least that's the goal. I don't want to overheat these and end up with, um, you know, melting the plastic. But, you know, you also don't want to cold solder these things where it's just the solder is just laying on top. And I'm just trying to go a little slow just to make sure that, um, you know, put enough in there that it's going to work, but not enough that it's overflowing and going to get that Corvette 50 guy all over my rear end. 
All right, so I have drilled a hole through the housing because, again, my janky ass um, spindle is not internally grounded, so I'm going to have to bring this to this captured nut here. What that's going to do for me is allow me to ground to the case through the screw, and then that wire in turn is going to come in here and connect to one of these terminals. Okay, so if you've put your one infinity together, you know that there are just two screws that hold the trim router or spindle uh, by way of this clamp here. Uh, one recommendation that I have for you, because you have uh, you know an aluminum riser here, or I guess an aluminum um, clamp here, and then you have steel bolts, I do recommend using a little bit of anti-seize compound. I had previously put those on, put that on before, and um, you know, so that'll help you if you have to service this later on. The other thing I'm gonna mention is that um, we're gonna be dealing with some electrical wiring today. Please consult your tax professional for advice on electrical. And uh, that being said, I do have the router unplugged, so I've got to remove it from the uh, spindle uh, carriage. And then in order to fish it out of my um, drag chains, I'm going to have to remove it, uh, remove the cable from this end so that I can use one to chase the other through. So that's what we're doing here. And if you ever need to make your cable longer because you upgrade to a journeyman or you're using drag chains and uh, just want to make sure that you have ample room, this is really a simple operation here. Um, this is not um, meant for being a walkthrough on how to do this. Um, remember, use electricity and um, power tools at your own risk. So we've got a little strain relief here on the cable where it comes into the router. And so we really just have two leads coming into the uh, motor assembly white and a black there in the this configuration white is inboard black is outboard so uh, let me find the proper screwdriver for that and again this is unplugged all right so we have that removed i'm also gonna slip this guy out of here I'm going to just keep all this together for now using one of my handy dandy trays. So then we're going to just remove the retention plate up here because that's where my uh, router, my spindle, or excuse me, router cable is routed through. And I'm just going to partially remove or loosen that up without completely disassembling it because it's really just not needed. I won't be rerouting my spindle cable through there. So along these drag chains, there are little cable stays that will clamp the cable in place and keep it still for you. And the best laid plans of mice and men is that I'm going to use this cable hopefully as a method to feed my other cable through. So that being said, I'm going to reset the camera and just uh, show you how this is fed through. All right. And so my configuration is probably a lot like yours. We have drag chains assembled. So it runs, uh, all my wiring will run through and then down behind. And then additionally, I have um, another set of drag chains here. And that just tidies everything up um, and makes it so that I'm not running over cables as I'm doing any machining operations. And, um, you know, nothing, nothing wrong with having some tidied up wires. But especially if you're going to have you know, power cords, you know, running through there, you, you certainly don't want to run those over. 
All right, so now what I hope to show you here is that we're using the proper cable uh, for this application. So this is continuous motion flexing cable. And it's something that I acquired from Automation Direct. And you can see here that there are four cores, strand for some relief and shielding there. Um, so anytime you're using, you know, high frequency drives like this, you definitely want to make sure that you're using the correct cable and that it is in fact, because there's a lot of motion in this machine, that it is in fact a continuous motion cable. So especially as it goes through um, your drag chains, um, specifically at the bend locations here, um, this is, this is going to flex an awful lot as the machine you know moves to and fro so uh, do not cheap out this stuff um, i'll put a link below uh, but it runs about 250 a foot um, and is uh, well worth the investment so what i am going to do is use a simple butt connector and none of this is um none of this is how the machine is going to be final wired i'm simply using because I'm a little bit lazy. I am simply gonna butt connect uh, one or two wires together on the existing um, 120 cord that was running the Makita router. I'm gonna butt those connectors together, or butt connect that together so that I can simply feed it through without disassembling my drag chain. So hopefully that works out for me. These other wires, and again, none of this is connected to any source of electricity. All right, so let's see if this works. Okay, so as you can see there, I'm simply using the um, existing wire run that was through the drag chain as a way to pull the new lead through that same drag chain. All right, so what I found was that I was fighting the camera instead of focusing on um, actually doing the job of, of soldering these connections. So what I would tell you is that um, there's very little room to work here with the wiring fitting within the constraints of the length of the body. So um, as a result, what I found was that I was really focusing too much on getting the footage you know, in frame, but that limited my ability to uh, really focus on the job at hand. So I have uh, done that off camera and uh, really you just want to make sure that you are isolated away from each of the um, poles here. And once you have that set, so this connector will fit uh, really just one way. Um, so we're going to orient this as such, push that all the way in. Then we're going to bring up what I guess I would call is kind of a call it arrangement. So there is this I guess I'll pull it apart. Um, this this back body screws into the backside of your metal coupler. Okay, so we're going to make that nice and snug. I'm not going to over tighten it. We're not trying to crush anything. And then I'm going to bring the portion up into this, which really is a bit of a collet here. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but you know there are um, slits in this arrangement here and so then this rubber grommet would fit inside there Gotta make sure you get it started in there and all i'm trying to do is just make sure that i'm not flexing too hard uh, you know on the wire where it's connected because you know the whole goal of this is to give the wire strain relief 
um, so that as your Z axis moves up and down, um, this is taking the load of the movement, not your soldered connections uh, inside. So uh, last piece here, we'll bring the pinch nut in. So then as we tighten this, it's going to tighten around those fingers, squeezing in on the um, rubber piece, which is going to seat up against the outer shield of the cable. And so now we have a very positive strain relief here on this connector here. So again, you don't have a lot of room for extra wire um, when you're working within the constraints of the body of this. So just take your time, go slow, and just make sure you do a clean job. Okay, and so now at this point I have far too much cable hanging out of my drag chain, but that's fine. I wanted to give myself plenty of room to work. So we're going to uh, connect this here. And by the way, I have gone ahead and double checked with a DVOM that this is my ground connection here, which I had to make an external connection through the mounting screw. So my top piece of my spindle is plastic. It's not metal, so I could not attach it from underneath. I had to bring that through a vent and then simply use one of the mounting screws and a simple eyelet butt connector to use a case screw to ground that fourth wire. But what I've done is made sure that I don't have any shorts to ground on the three, um, three phase power wires and uh, made sure that I had a very good ground uh, connection from the back of this connector to the body of the spindle. So we will attach that there, right? And then, um, All right, so this is the other end of the spindle uh, wire, and this is gonna go to my VFD eventually. And just as a last check, so we should have um, some resistance between these poles of our three hot leads, but we should not have any continuity uh, to the ground. And again, we're just making sure that we don't have a short. So, so you're dealing with electricity, you wanna make sure that everything is as you expect. So none of these leads are shorted to ground. So I have the ground over here. We have a very good connection to the spindle body. Just double checking each lead because you know what stuff happens and uh, with 240 volts, you don't wanna play games. So, but everything is good. And now we'd be ready to fish this through the rest of the way, take out the additional slack that I have left in the um, spindle end of the wiring and terminate this over at the VFD. Okay, so in the last segment, what I mentioned is that, uh, you know, when, when you're soldering, especially something very small, like these aircraft connectors that uh, are gonna go into this spindle, and, you know, you combine that with, it's gonna be a high voltage connection. I found myself getting distracted by trying to move the camera and give the camera more of uh, you know the space to work and it, it just wasn't working out. So I have skipped uh, all that. There's plenty of great tutorials out there about how to properly uh, solder. Um, and I'm also not gonna go into great detail uh, because VFDs, which are variable frequency drives, which you need in order to run a spindle, um, that's what this guy is here. Uh, so if you're not comfortable doing wiring, then I definitely suggest that you either buy a pre-assembled kit or get an electrician to help you. It is not a terribly, um, you know, in-depth job, but you know, there's a lot of risk there. So I know I joked about it earlier, uh, <clears throat> you know, but I just tell you to use caution because this, this is the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, it moves at the speed of light. So you don't want, you don't want to be wrong, but um, in general, um, it takes more effort I think, to program the VFD once it's together than it does to get comfortable with the, with the wiring. So from the, your mains or your wall outlet, um, you're gonna have two hot leads that go to your VFD, and then one lead goes to a common ground um, over here on mine, it's all the way on the right-hand side. And then you know, you'll have a three-pole spindle 
But what a lot of the Asian import spindles don't have is the fourth, and it, and it would in most cases be pin number four, uh, should be the ground. However, um, I see it on, on, often, um, you know, really regularly where people buy a spindle and there are four pins here, but inside there's just three leads going to the different poles and the fourth lug in the connector doesn't ground and it should ground to the case of the spindle. So, um, you know, that's actually dangerous and I guess they have different, you know, standards for um, electrical safety and whatnot over in China, but at any rate, you know, you're gonna wanna manually, if nothing else, ground your fourth lug in your uh, connection there. Um, then the three phases go on, on my VFD, their terminals U, V, and W. So other than just taking your time and being careful, there's really, you know, there, there's no rocket science involved with doing this. And there's a lot of tutorials out there about that. The one thing that I think does deserve a little bit of uh, extra attention. So on the back side of the spindle connectors, you need to join your cable to the cups that are uh, housed inside this. And they're very small. They're maybe about 10 or 10 or 13 millimeters long. So you probably only have about six or so millimeters of this cup, where if this is the insulation of the wire and here are the strands, what you want to do is tin your, your exposed wire. And this is, you know, the best that I could draw of these little cups. And I'll put a picture in picture uh, down below as well, but there it is dished out, um, you know, and a 16 gauge wire should fit just fine in there. But what you want to do is tin the wire and also tin the lug on the back of the aviation connector. And that does not mean to fill all this in uh, with solder. It just means to tin it. Um, so, you know, if you put too much in there, it's going to take longer to heat up, but also it's going to overflow and make a mess. And you, what you don't want, because this is again, a very tight connector, you don't want there to be overflowing solder that could possibly uh, bridge a connection between two of the pins there. So just a couple of quick tips about um, the things that you're going to find as you go forward with this. Okay, and, and so to bring this home, so I I'm, I'm, will say a couple of things that had I not in my waiting period last year when I was uh, waiting for the arrival of my CNC, if I didn't have too much free time on my hands and consume a bunch of YouTube videos and kind of stumble across um, adding a spindle to a CNC, then I probably wouldn't never have thought to do this. And so I actually had the spindle before I had um, this machine. I can tell you that um, I did go ahead and set my machine up initially with just the standard configuration of a Makita router. And I can tell you that, um, you know, it's, it works fine. And I think that for most people, myself included, it would do really everything I'd asked it to do. I've done 12 and 13 hour carves with that router and um, you know, other than it's a little bit noisy and there's probably some arguments to be made for um, the upgrade. And one of those is certainly gonna be that this, this spindle here has four bearings inside where this has two. This is a more efficient motor and is meant for long run times. This is a trim router that frankly, um, you know, it's meant to be turned on, used for five, 10, 15 minutes and then turned off. So running it, you know, hours on end um, is really just outside the envelope of what it was designed for. So I will tell you that the uh, free running sound of the spindle versus the router, the spindle is much quieter. However, I'm gonna tell you that when you're cutting wood, especially if you're moving up to a, you know, 1.5 kilowatt um, spindle, your expectation is you're gonna maybe take more aggressive cuts. So it, it, the cutter making the uh, passes through your material is really what's gonna make most of the noise. So when it's cutting, I don't expect to see a whole lot of difference in actual cutting um, decibels that, um, you know, noise level that you're going to hear when it's working, but certainly when it's just free spinning, it is quieter for sure um, than the router is. Um, so, and, and typically there's less run out 
um, you know, at the, at the output shaft of these compared to the amount of run out that you would find with a router. So again, primarily I had wired this in the past, um, had issues with my connector because it, it just, I, I might've left it loose to be honest. I don't know why, but it just didn't uh, stay together at the end. That concerned me, so I took it off. The faster solution was just to throw the router back on. And uh, so when I ordered this much better connector here, I've had it for probably six or eight months and I just, you know, the router's been servicing the need just fine until recently after about a, you know, nine to 12 months, I'm not exactly sure how long I've been using this router, um, the brushes did finally um, hit their exhaustion point. So I'm gonna put new, I already have the brushes sitting here. So I will replace the brushes. The router is just fine. It's just the, you know, the brushes on that motor, you know, are a consumable part. And I've asked a lot of this router over the, over the last period of time. So um, I'm gonna run that spindle for a while, see how it does. And um, so just briefly, what I'll tell you is that I have um, taken this. Now this is the other thing, and I, and I will put a link to the cabling that I have used. So it is, continuous motion, double shielded um, robotic wire. And it costs about $2.50 a, a foot. So it's coming up out of here just so that I can, you know, maintain the least amount of strain. Uh, even though it's got great strain relief here, I just still want to give it a good path. Runs through drag chains over here and then back to my VFD, which is on the wall back there. And what you see the yellow part next to it is what is a vac switch uh, so this system runs on um, 240 volts and one of the things that um, you know i will give some feedback on the vfd they don't have a power switch so you would really have to unplug it um, in order to turn it off the the case fans for these vfds are notoriously loud and um, so as a result you know, uh, I wanted an easy way to um, <clears throat> turn that on and off so that IVAC switch has this, um, has this independent remote control. And so I use that to control that 240 volt outlet there. And um, so when I'm done, I can turn it off remotely. I don't even need access to the back or obviously if you have an emergency, you wanna cut the power that's available to you. So. Um, I'll, I'll also sit, put a link in there for that um, IVAC switch because I found it to be uh, pretty handy. So in closing, what I would tell you is that the comment comes up quite often in the CNC community about running router versus running a spindle. Um, again, I could tell you that the reason that I got one was that I had some time to kill while I was waiting for my machine and uh, just ended up buying one because, you know, I'm a dork. So um, glad I had it today because, you know, obviously if my router went down, um, I was able to just slap that back in there and, and put the connector on. It kind of forced me to put the part in that I had ordered some months ago. But it is not patently required for you to run your CNC um, by any stretch of the imagination. This Makita router would be super serviceable for most people. And again, myself included, um, I just don't do that many huge long cuts. Um, and the machine is so rigid. I will be curious to see now, you know, with a um, more efficient cutting arrangement with more power, um, you know, what speeds I can regularly achieve with my Onefinity. So I appreciate you watching. I hope that uh, you get out to your shop and make something new and exciting. And do me a favor, leave a comment down below with um, your thoughts on whether you're going to or not going to add a CNC spindle, uh, or if you're just gonna use the router that's on yours. And uh, while you're there, go ahead and give a like and a subscribe if you care to. I sure would appreciate it, it would help me grow the channel. So thanks again for watching, take care.